Today we're going to talk about modern data management, how to set up your data for success within your organization. Um, so I'm Alec, I lead business operations at SelectStar. We're a data discovery platform. Uh, we work with a lot of different companies from Fivetran, Block, Pitney Bowes, Opendoor, Fair, to basically help them manage their data model, um, working with both data engineers, data platform teams, data scientists, um, et cetera. So what are we gonna cover today? We're gonna talk about why we think data discovery is important. I'm gonna blow through that section in the interest of time pretty quickly. Then we're gonna spend the bulk of the time talking about rollout strategy. So I wish I could tell you, you just buy a data discovery tool or a data catalog and all of a sudden you're gonna have perfect data discovery. Um, but there is process uh, that needs to be put in place. And so that's where we're gonna spend the majority of our time and how to do that efficiently and quickly so that you can get value uh, right away from a tool versus you know having a months long implementation process. And then we'll also cover uh, some tips and tricks for implementing the catalog. Um, so quickly, you know, we think there's really three major trends driving the need for data discovery. Growth of data in the cloud, uh, decentralization of data ownership, you know, embedded data teams within different organizations, creating uh, opportunities for misalignment, duplicative work, et cetera. And then also democratization of data access with uh, modern BI tools. Now everyone can be a data consumer, a data wrangler. You know, people are, are it's not just the data team that is, needs to understand where your data is and what it means. Um, and so that creates a lot of challenges for organizations. Um, questions pop up, where can I find this data? Do we have it? Why are my numbers different? Um, you know, did we, did we make a change here, et cetera? Um, and they're, they're really hard to track down. So when you think about historically how people have gone about answering these questions, um, you know, it's a Slack blast where it's not clear who should be responding. One-on-one -on -one messaging, if you know who the subject matter expert is. Um, and that is just internal knowledge. It's not being institutionalized. Or you go and try and figure it out yourself, uh, looking through GitHub or you know sifting through query logs on your own. It's a very manual process. It takes hours and hours of work, and it's just not an efficient way to go about it um, for an organization with lots of data where these questions pop up all the time from different people, often similar questions. Um, so existing solutions, uh, we feel, aren't um, necessarily adequate. Uh, you've got like wiki documentation, it's static, it's not connected to your data. Uh, people who have gone through this process, by the time they get everything documented in a Google Sheet, it's already out of date because your data model is dynamic, it's always changing. And then you've got DIY or open source solutions that require a lot of engineering uh, resources and time to roll them out. Similarly with enterprise data catalogs, powerful tools, but takes a lot of money, a lot of time. Um, you know, it's gonna be months potentially before you're getting value from these tools. You need to hire full-time FDEs to manage them. Um, so we think there's a better way, which is with a modern data discovery platform like SelectStar that can automate a lot of this process, help you find, understand, document, collaborate, and govern your data. Um, so that's kind of the preamble, but where I really wanna focus is rollout strategy, right? You believe everything I just said, I want a data discovery tool, I want to buy one, but how do I actually implement it so that my team can be successful? So that's what we're going to walk through. Um, and I think the key thing when you're getting started is to really understand objective stakeholders and milestones, right? You need to know the why, the who, and the how for data discovery so that you kind of have a North Star to make sure that you're successful. Um, so the objectives need to be clear from the start and you need to have some amount of organizational buy-in, whether that's just for the data team or all the way from the C-suite down to understand why do we need this tool? What are the specific pain points we're trying to solve? What are the use cases we want this tool to be leveraged for? That's gonna make sure that this is successful versus just another you know, SaaS line item that no one actually uses and just sits there. Um, next, as part of that is understanding who are the stakeholders? Who's going to be responsible for helping to do the initial rollout? Who's going to be helping to maintain it over time? Who's going to be leveraging it, using it? Um, you want to have that really clearly identified up front. 
And then similarly, milestones, right? Like what are we trying to do here? How are we gonna measure success? If that's a governance KPI, so amount of ownership, documentation, is it reducing the burden on data teams? Are we trying to reduce the amount of time they spend triaging something or the number of questions they're answering on an ad hoc basis? Um, those are all things you wanna make sure that you're tracking and measuring up front. So uh, objectives differ based on every organization. Some of the common ones we see are maybe preventing data outages in the organization. Um, so you wanna make sure that dashboards are up to date, they're accurate, you don't have outages, and that people can actually trust the data that they have. Um, and so this might require um, being able to really easily find lineage, trace dependencies, you might wanna integrate it with your CI pipeline um, to proactively prevent outages. And that will require bringing in data engineers and data analysts as part of that. Um, if you want to enable self-service analytics to reduce the bottleneck that a data team could be when people are trying to make data-driven decisions and allow them to find their own data, understand it, and then take action on it, that's going to bring in you know, business stakeholders and other folks. So each of these objectives has you know, different milestones you want to track, different uh, stakeholders you want to engage. So being very clear uh, from the start of this is what we care about, this is what we're trying to do with this tool, um, will just allow you to really plan appropriately for who needs to be involved uh, in a data discovery tool rollout. Um, we typically look at deployment in two phases. The first phase is what we generally call design and that is leveraged mainly by the data platform team, analy analytics engineering team, as well as uh, analytics folks, business analysts, sort of the power users who really understand your data. And then phase two is the broader rollout where you can bring on uh, data consumers, less technical folks to leverage the platform. Um, you know, it could be biz ops, PMs, uh, operations managers, or even C-suite executives who are just looking for a dashboard and want to understand how are we calculating our metrics. So phase one uh, starts with the data platform team, and this is where we design the data catalog. So we look at this across, across a couple different vectors. First is we think uh, tagging structure is really important, and SelectStar uses tags other tools use different terms, but it's really about how are we classifying our data? What are the different domains we want to track? What are the different statuses we want to notify people about? Uh, you know, lots of um, companies may use the like bronze, silver, gold level for their data in the data warehouse to denote is it raw data, is it production data, et cetera. So we asked the data platform team to think through what they want this design to look like. We don't require them to go and tag all of their data because that's a lot of effort. And we're gonna talk about that in, in a moment, but we think developing that design upfront is really critical so that it's not the wild west when people get into the tool and you've got a thousand different tags, some of which mean the same thing. Next is data deprecation. So trying to clean up your data model, tools should help you find data that isn't being used. Um, and you might want to remove that from the platform. You may want to remove it from your data warehouse or BI tool to save on costs. Um, or you may just want to limit the scope of what people can actually see in the tool to what's going to be relevant for them. And then the last part is ownership um, to help as you start with curation. When people do have questions, you want to have those subject matter experts clearly defined. Hey, I need access to this data. Who's the owner? Or I noticed something's wrong. Who should I notify? You want to get those owners in there. Um, and not all data is created equal. So uh, you should start with the most important data for your data model and get that documented and curated um, and move on from there. You can roll out a tool with only 15% of your data documented because that might be you know, 85% of the value to your company. Um, and like I said, tools like SelectStar, other data discovery platforms will make it very easy for you to identify what's actually being used, what actually has dependencies downstream. Uh, phase two, or sorry, phase one, part two, is bringing on those power users. So analytics and data science folks, people who live in the data are maybe subject matter experts, and they can help you fill in the missing gaps in your documentation. 
And when we think about documentation, we kind of break it down into three groups. First is automated insights. You shouldn't have to do anything manual here. Your tool should provide this automatically. So that's lineage. It's popularity, entity relationship diagrams, you know, example queries and joins. These are things that should come out of the box with a tool, it should be automated, so your team doesn't have to do that work. Next is additional curation. So this is around uh, adding those tags that we talked about, adding in any uh, missing data dictionary terms at a field or column level. And for every organization, depending on your data maturity, you may already have this, the tool can ingest it automatically, or you may need to add this in. And a tool like SelectStar or a data discovery platform can be really helpful for crowdsourcing that information um, because sometimes the developers, the engineers, don't have all the business context to properly document your data for those end users. And then last is the semantic layer. So metrics, business glossaries, FAQs, those sort of things, you should layer in as well. Uh, after you get it, your tool sort of curated, at least that, you know, the most popular data sets, then you want to prepare for the broader rollout. Um, and we think there's kind of two important steps here. First is developing rules of engagement for a platform. Um, so I don't see a tag that I want. Can I create that or should I ask someone to do it? A, a description is wrong. Can I update that myself? Should I be submitting a request? Um, you know, I need access to this data that I can see exists, but I don't have it. What's the right path there? Um, so in order to really get involvement from folks and adoption of a tool, you want to have those rules clearly defined up front and easily accessible so that people understand how they should be engaging with the platform. And then the next is onboarding materials. I think this differs for everybody. Some tools, you know, you may have really intense training courses for SelectStar. It's designed to be intuitive, and I think a lot of the modern tools are as well. So, you know, you might do a quick product demo, um, but what we really like to do is set up how-to guides for common workflows. So for each persona, think through how are they going to be engaging with the tool and give them an example. Um, and then data trivia is something we've also seen be really successful where uh, you come up with actual questions the data team has answered, and here's how you can do it in SelectStar. You give them those questions, and then people submit their answers you know, we've seen brown bag lunches um, where people share, here's how I answered my own data question with the data discovery platform. Um, and, you know, that, that just sort of helps to reinforce that this is how you can uh, be self-sufficient with these sort of tools. Um, so as far as the, the timeline goes, you know, we think you, you want to set up your key milestones and track progress. Um, this is going to be different for every organization, but in our mind, platform setup should be really quick. Um, you know, with SelectStar, it's usually a day, maybe two. The catalog design, um, again, it depends on your organization, how complex your data model is, but the design itself should be maybe one to two weeks. Um, and then curation, uh, we don't have a timeline to, to give here because it depends your starting point. Some folks already have all their data documented in DBT. You're good to go. Other folks, you know, they don't have a data dictionary to begin with, and so that might take a little more time. Um, but those are kind of the key steps. Then you get to your rollout, you onboard your data consumers, and you want to start tracking the usage of the platform to verify you know, that, hey, people are actually using this, we're getting ROI. So key things like num percentage of data assets that are documented, number of monthly active users, ownership. Um, that's for usage of the platform, but that doesn't necessarily tell you ROI because Maybe someone's only in the tool for two minutes, but they were able to answer their question really quickly. So we think that's uh, very beneficial. So you also want to check in with your data team and see how much time are you spending on these tasks? How many ad hoc questions are you getting? Um, and things like that. Um, so I only have a minute left, so I'm just going to kind of buzz through these tips and tricks. Um, first is with tags, we think break tags up into category tags for different domains status tags to tell you more information about that data. Um, docs and metrics we think are important. Getting all of the documentation into your data discovery platform, linking it to data directly so people can see, here's my metric, here's where it lives in my data model, here's who else is using it. Or similarly, documentation for how is a table generated, process, design, things like that should be linked directly to your tables. 
Um, and then for user engagement, we talked about training. Um, for usage, when people do have questions, inevitably, share links to them from, uh, from the platform to kind of help them see, oh, I could have answered this for myself. Um, and then tracking the tool should do that for you. Um, so that's it. Thank you, guys. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions about data discovery, how to roll out a data catalog or select star, you can find us on our website. We got a booth in the expo hall for the rest of the day. And yeah, thanks.